What's up, y'all? I'm Marcus, and this is Radix Chronicle, a tactical RPG for Windows, Linux, and I can now announce Android 2. Um, backers on Kickstarter will get their choice of Windows, Linux, or Android. Even though we added those mid-campaign, you guys are still going to get the choice. Um, this is early footage, so everything is in an unfinished, super work-in-progress sort of state. But... I wanted to show off the basics of how to play Radix, particularly for folks who maybe haven't played many tactical RPGs. It was something that when we did the announce trailer, one comment that we got a lot of was, I really can't follow the gameplay. So yeah, this is a live recorded walkthrough on a debug build of the game um, to kind of give you guys an idea of what it's like to actually play. Uh, it's also being uploaded in a vertical format so you can get an idea of how this game will look on your phone as well. So let me show you what the game's like. First of all, this is a tactical turn-based RPG. Um, so if you look at the top of the screen, this bar that you have up here, you can see what order units are gonna take their turns in. Your party's on the bottom here with the, the large headed character here being the one that currently has her turn. And uh, the enemies are on the top. When you get your turn, you get a, a command ring that pops up around you here and we can click help and we can click on pretty much anything on the screen and find out more about it like for example the little boot icon is move lets you move to nearby spaces or this attack a nearby unit with sahana's bare fist deals four damage uh, one thing i would like to point out is that the game is super simple like even if you haven't played tactical rpgs before um it's super easy to understand actually i would like to say this is a really good um, intro to the genre like you don't have to do damage calculations and stuff like that if we hit an enemy with Sahana with a normal attack we're gonna do four damage and you can see her attack power down here so it's really easy to get that information and these other icons you can look and you see her magic power this affects spell casting but each spell uses this number differently um, and then there's agility which determines how quickly the units next turn will come and you'll notice that when uh, when these units start moving on the bar they move at different speeds. So for now, let's just move Sahana. We're just gonna move her forward. Oh, I gotta turn off help mode. <laughs> I still had help mode triggered. Let's just move her forward here. Uh, now we have her reluctant husband, Cotty. Uh, to demonstrate this gameplay here, I'm just gonna rush forward with these guys as if I've never played a tactical game before in my life and I'm not thinking about anything at all and I'm just playing it casually, which is fine to do. We're just gonna rush forward. Uh, you can control the entire game with your left mouse button on PC or your finger on the phone or, or on a touch screen monitor for that matter. So uh, it's super easy to control, super easy to play. All right, Hana's got her turn here. When you attack or defend or use magic or an item in Radix Chronicle, you have a timing trial. There's no luck. Like if I, if I hit this enemy, we're going to do four damage to it if I get a good result. I can crit if my timing is perfect. You'll see here, there's gonna be a little indicator ring that pops up when we attack. Uh, I wanna try to aim, I'm gonna go for blue right now just to show what it's like when you get a normal hit. Boom. It's really, really, really easy to get a normal hit. Some people might be concerned, oh, I'm not good at timing mini games and stuff like that. It's only really a consideration if you're trying to crit the enemies. If you're just trying to do normal damage, it's really not that bad. The timing's super lenient. Now, if you're pushing and you're really wanting to play at a higher level and you're wanting to get crits and stuff like that, that's when you run the risk of also missing. And so it becomes um, a gamble, but you choose when you want to take that gamble. You choose when you want to go for the crit or when you want to play it safe. I'm just gonna keep rushing forward here and we're gonna, oh, we got the perfect. So we do six damage. And so we will always do four damage with our normal attack there or six with our, our perfects if we get our timing just right. Oh, and I missed. I missed on the defense so I took four damage. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot when you only have, oh, how much does he have? I guess this is another thing I, I could take this time to explain the info button. We click this info button here and then we can click on various units on the field and we can see information about them. And in this case, Cotty, he started with 21 HP and he's down to 14. So he's getting beat up pretty bad there. 
Uh, I would also like to point out that when you click on a unit here, their icon on the bar also gets larger. So if you have multiple enemies that are the same, you can actually tell which one's which by just going to the info button and clicking around. All right, we're just gonna keep just doing normal attacks here and I'm not gonna try to show off and get goods. Oh, you might be wondering why she did six damage. Celestora has six attack power. We can also use help mode here. This unit deals six damage with its basic attacks, and which means she would deal, what, nine, actually, if I hit the perfect with her. Maybe we'll go for the perfect next. Ooh, we got one. Ooh, he's casting a spell. Their spells are really nasty at close range. So, we actually have an opportunity here. Spells have a casting time. When you get to this uh, red marker on the bar, it's kind of covered up right now, but there's a red marker right here on the bar. When you get there, that's when you get to input your command, but your commands don't get executed until you get to the white marker at the end of the bar. So this spell has a bit of casting time to it and moving is faster than casting that spell. So I bet I can actually dodge this. Oh, it feels so good. Oh, wait, oh, I almost missed our attack. Oh, nine damage. Oh, what a hit. And the dodge. Oh, oh no, but I missed the defense again. But it's okay. It gets really exciting. Like, when you're just playing it casually, like, just trying to hit perfect timings and stuff is already just really fun. Like, you don't even have to particularly be thinking deeply about the, the RPG elements, the tactics, the strategy. Oh, gosh, she got hit hard. Oh, God. And see, even with me missing here, we can still probably... <laughs> finish this fight. Oh, I got another perfect. Oh, there we go. I'm just gonna go for the good. Uh, the reason I'm charging blindly in here without any real tactics or strategy or what have you is because a lot of people are asking me how difficult the, the game is. And one thing that I really want to reinforce for you guys today is that the game is as easy or hard as you want to make it. It doesn't have, uh, it doesn't have like an easy mode option that you can pick, but one second, let me kill this guy and I'll show you. After you win a battle, first of all, you get a story scene, which the story scenes can be really fun. Uh, and you also get different story scenes depending on how you actually fight, how you actually play the battle. This first uh, um, level always has the same story scene afterwards just kind of introducing some of the characters and stuff but uh later later stages have quite a bit of variability we're gonna skip the scene though because i don't want to spoil stuff but after you clear a battle you get the option to either keep going or take a break if you keep going you're not healed you don't get your mp back your item uses aren't restored your status ailment buildup doesn't go down and you just go into the next level so if you wanna keep challenging yourself, you can keep going, but if you're playing casually and you just, or maybe you had some bad luck in the battle and you're just not feeling confident, you can always just take a break. This is, by the way, placeholder level up screen. We haven't done the visuals for this at all. Also, the, the preparation screen you're about to see is also super work in progress, but that's just how it is. Um, <laughs> it's early days still. All right, so we came back to base. Our characters are gonna get healed. We have our warehouse of items. Whenever you finish a battle, you get one item guaranteed. And there's also for each mission, there's an optional mission. And if you fulfill that mission, then you get uh, an extra item. In this case, we got a gold hilted dagger, which gives us more physical power, more magical power, and lets us cast thermal magic. Weak, but it does enable thermal spells. If you get distracted by the hilt, you'll meet the blade. Now, why are they called thermal spells? Here's one of the fun things about this. Uh, each character has can cast different magic. And if I give this gold-hilted dagger to Celestora, her thermal spell is actually frost. She will use a frost slash, a big AoE frost attack. If I give it to Kadi, he gets a frost type attack. If I give it to Hana, on the other hand, she gets a flame attack. And each weapon has thermal, material, and ethereal. So thermal is fire and ice, material is storm and earth, 
and ethereal is fairy and demon. So each one of your weapons, you depending on who you give it to, you you have different options for which spells you're actually going to have access to. So this is one of the fun tactical things that you can uh, think about or strategic level choices that you can make. We also picked this up. This is a poison nail. Attack a target causing nearby uh, a nearby target causing poison buildup. Cob scratch fever. This is enemy magic. Uh, we actually have this item that we can use so that we can use this enemy spell. Enemy spells, you, you can get them. You can get them. If you do the optional missions for uh, each level, you can get all of the enemy magic. And you can choose to equip it in your slot. And the way this works is you get one use of this uh, per trip like into, into the field. Let's go back and we'll go to the fields again. And there's a little intro here, but we're going to skip it. All right, this is mission two. There's a lot of cobs here. There's a lot of them. But because we went back to town, we actually have fully healed in the first place. But in the second place, we have some options available to us. For example, well, actually, I should use the help menu to show you guys the description, huh? We now have access to Floral Flame. Deal 16 damage and 50 burn build up to the target. Pretty and hot, just like me. As you can see, Hana narrates all of the item text. <laughs> it's a little less Dark Souls and a little more disguise as far as that goes. Uh, I'll show you guys the power of Floral Flame. Oh, after we block that. Whew, no damage. I'll explain that in a minute. Oh, get wrecked. You'll notice a couple of little, different little visual glitches and stuff. Uh, like I said, everything is a work in progress. This game is in active development. And uh, the Kickstarter is, has been completely successfully funded at this point, so... We, we are going to make the game. We are going to get to make it. We're still trying to reach some of the stretch goals for illustrations, for remixed music tracks for different times of day. Um, oh, you know what? I'll show you guys something else. Um, we're not going to make use of this right now, but one of the other major elements of the, the game is that you can change the terrain. You can actually change what sort of ground enemies on or that you have access to so we'll use this fire spell on an empty panel we'll use floral flame and you can see that we've changed these tiles to be uh, dirt if we hit them with another fire spell we could turn them into a flaming scorched uh, spot that would burn enemies or we could freeze them and then make ice that we can slide across or make enemies slide across um, Oh, you know what we can actually I won't use this on the enemy here Which you know, normally you would probably want to use it on an enemy or you might want to use it to transform the environment Here I'll show you you can turn a pool of water Into poison and actually because these things were touching one another they actually it chained and so now Han Hana's standing in poison I'm probably gonna want to move her out of that, huh? I just wanted to show it off for you guys. But I hope y'all are also noticing that the timing's not super hard. I'm hitting a couple more crits than I actually intended to. <laughs> let me let me back off. Oh, by the way, Hana now has seven attack power because she has this gold hilted dagger equipped at this point. Uh, so she can more than hold her own. She does seven with a normal hit. I'll try to crit with her next time just to show because she she starts off with the lowest melee attack power, but now that she has a weapon, Kadi's attack animation is definitely getting changed, by the way. <laughs> Ooh, there, there we go. Let's see. Ooh, 10 damage. So nice. Oh, by the way, you may have noticed the combat log at the bottom of the screen. You can expand it. Or close it like that so you can see more detailed information if you want to or you can just kind of keep it neat and tucked away and that's up to you that's completely your choice oh I, I'm sorry I keep going for perfects 
<laughs> I'm not supposed to be going for perfects right now. Oh, by the way, this Cobb is now standing in poison. I don't know if he's ended a turn in it yet. Let's see. Let's see info on this guy. You might have noticed the stats and effects. If I click on effects, oh yeah, we can see. So you see his poison meters already started building up. If I click on help, you'll see poison is a very powerful effect. Decreases melee damage done by 50%, increases susceptibility to burn. So if you're fighting an enemy that has a really strong melee attack, you might want to poison them. That might be how you want to use your limited use of those poison nail items. You know, you only get that one cast of it. Maybe you want to use it on a strong enemy that has a strong physical attack to reduce how much damage it can do to you. Or maybe you want to use it on an enemy that you want to burn to make it easier for them to burn. Uh, you'll also notice chill here has this skull on it. If we could inflict chill on this, it would instantly die no matter what its HP is. That's the fatal blow system. So... Can you, if you can imagine if you were fighting a bunch of things that were weak to poison and then you poison a bunch of water and then you just have them standing at it and then they're just dying left and right, pop, 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 without you having to actually hit them. That would be efficient, wouldn't it? <laughs> All right, we are out of MP for that, so. Let's hop over here. Uh, he's about to hit me. Let me choose to defend, and we'll reduce the damage that he's able to do. And I got the perfect too, so he only did one damage despite having three attack power. Can do the same here? Yeah. Nice. Sometimes it's better to just... Play def oh, I misclicked. I misclicked because I have this little tiny cursor right now because I messed up. I was trying to put one of our custom cursors in place for this little gameplay demonstration, but I accidentally picked the wrong one. All right, so we actually get a different scene here. Uh, Soul Store got the most kills. I'll get you for sure next time. You're over three so far. Might as well go for four. Then again, who knows? Maybe you'll get lucky. Maybe we'll get lucky and you'll actually succeed. Uh, so, are you guys talking about sparring or something like that? We really need to do some team building exercises or something. Oh, I know, a trust fall. That's the ticket. We'll jump on some logs and do a rope course and climb a wall and... Yeah, yeah, this will be totally great. Oops, I shouldn't have shown that scene. All right, so we're going to take a break here. Before we press forward... I'm actually gonna restart the game because I want to show you what happens if you play it differently. Like this was just me just kind of like rushing forward and just like playing with timing and not really using a lot of tactics. Okay, I used some tactics, but I can't fucking help it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. But you guys give me one second and we are going to mix things up a little bit. All right. This time, I'm going to try to use a little bit more tactics. You'll also notice that there's scan lines in place here. Uh, one second. Probably going to have a little bit of a visual glitch as I swap out here for a second and turn on the debug menu. But I want to show you guys. Not everybody likes scan lines. So we do have an off setting, and that's what I was playing on earlier. The game was actually designed, the visuals were designed to have a scan line effect. Um, but there's there's the basic scan lines, there's also dense scan lines for high resolution displays. Um, not sure how YouTube's gonna treat those scan lines though, which is the reason why I turned them off. There's also enhanced, which gives you a scan line effect, but also brightens the colors to offset the darkening effect of the scan lines. And there's this neat CRT shader that Ray came up with. So it kind of replicates what it would look like on a CRT monitor. Ray says it's primitive. I say it's, it's pretty dang, pretty dang nice, pretty dang close. Um, for this section of gameplay, I'm actually going to play with dense scan lines on, since I played with no scan lines in the earlier section. Um, I should also point out, I made all the graphics for this video game. I made all the music. I did the gameplay design, all that. Ray did all of the programming. This has been a two-person 
um, endeavor. We've worked on this part-time for about a year now. And uh, we're trying to step it into high gear. And that's what the Kickstarter is all about. Is trying to get ourselves more time to work on it full time. So that we can make something cool. Alright, so I said I'm going to use some more tactics this time. So I'm going to aim for some perfects. The first thing that I did was I moved forward to take up this space. Alright, I don't want to move forward with him now because then he would be attacked. And specifically he would be attacked by this guy's spell. If you remember earlier, I said their spells are really dangerous at close range. Their Wind Reaver spell uh, does a lot of damage at point blank and it travels a long distance, but the damage that it does drops off as it covers ground. So one of the best ways to handle it is to... Ooh, she might be able to move in time to dodge this attack. One of the best ways to handle their attack is to bait it out from a distance and it will do next to no damage and you can waste all their MP. Um, but they only throw it on diagonals. Uh, so another way to handle it is to just approach them from the, the top or the bottom. Let's see if we can dodge this attack. Oh, we did it. And a whiff. And we've saved some, uh, we've saved some HP there. Which is good because on this playthrough, we're actually going to press forward. Alright, this guy just moved. She might get hit here, but she won't get hit by a Wind Reaver. And that's the most important thing. Let's go for these perfects. All right, um, let's see, which one are you? You're in the middle. I'm gonna have her just defend. Uh, when you wait, your, your, your readiness doesn't reset to zero. It goes to 20% instead of zero. And that's really handy. That is really, really handy for Hold on, let me see something. Oh, he's about to take his turn. So I could attack with Cody and hit this enemy, but if I do that, he's gonna get to use Wind Reaver on Cody. And we're trying to avoid as much damage as we can here. So, cancel info mode and let's just back it up. Now, he'll physically attack her. He actually did a pretty good hit there. Oh, that wasn't a perfect. That was just a good. All right, get the kill there. Can do some damage here. You're gone. You're gone. I don't want to miss any trials. That's, that's kind of a top priority because if I miss a trial, we're going to not fulfill our bonus objective. All right. He's going to use a Wind Reaver on Celestora if I don't kill him. But I killed him. Alright, Hana is about to dodge this. Now I want to point out, I want you to go back even and look at the early uh, playthrough where I just charged forward. And look at my HP totals. Kadi's now on full health. Hana's on full health. Celestora's lost 3 HP. When you compare that to the spot that we were in when we just charged forward without using tactics, this is like before we have equipment options, before we have magic options. This is just with positioning alone, positioning and timing. There's so much variability and so much room for skill expression in the gameplay. All right, but. The question that you might ask yourself is why? Like, okay, I finished the battle, so I could just go back to base, right? So what's the point? Who cares if you do better? Well, if you're a gambler, you can keep going. And now you notice it's a different time of day. We're getting a similar, we're, we're, we're getting um, the scene from before and it's the same stage from before, but now, it's evening time and we aren't healed. Why would they be here and fighting us? Maybe something is scaring them out of their dens? They should be scared of me. Oh, it's another no miss trial for bonus treasure. All right, so uh, the question does remain though. Why do you care to keep pushing forward? 
Um, the answer is that you have a limited number of in-game days to explore and the story changes depending on how far you can get and which events that you can see uh, and which battles that you can do. Uh, but the further that you push, the harder things get because not only are we not healed here, as you can see, uh, Celestora is still down her 3 HP that we lost, um, but uh, stronger enemies come out at night. This is evening time now. So, oh, uh, and I should also point out, we don't have that dagger equipped on Hana because we haven't been back to the base. She doesn't have access to her floral flame spell. So we, you know, we don't have any extra resources to work with here. All right, let's see. I think I'm just gonna have her wait. Which cob is this? It is this guy on the left side, huh? Let's just wait. See, he threw that from so far away, and I hit the perfect. I didn't even take any damage from it. If he hits me point blank with that, I think I take six or so on a good defense. So it's a huge swing. I'm not going to move him because I want to bait this cob to waste his MP as well. We'll just wait it out here. You can also even bait enemies into moving in the way of other enemies' attacks. You can also use knockbacks and such to knock them into the way of them. And it can be a very useful tactic. We don't have access to a lot of that right now. Though. Okay, let's see. She should get her turn before he does. I wonder. We might be able to... Okay, just wait. Yeah, we're taking out all of their MP right now. And these guys are just approach approaching uh, from a straight direction. So we're safe there. Oh, I missed. That's... <laughs> that sucks, man. We're going to lose out on the bonus. Oh, man, I should have played it safe. If I was playing seriously there, I probably would have not gone for the crit in this situation. Uh, in order to play it safe and make sure I get that bonus. Now, you probably are thinking, why don't you just surround these guys and hit them multiple times per turn? And that is because I don't want to approach some of these guys from an angle while they still have MP. Because they're going to really mess me up. Alright, we've already missed, so I can just go for perfects like crazy now. Oh, I didn't notice that. I didn't notice he was going to hit him from that angle. All right, this guy first will kill you. The top two are out of MP. All right, so this guy's out of MP. He's less of a threat. This guy's out of MP. He's less of a threat. This guy is standing in a position where he can light our characters up, particularly Hana and Kadi, because he does still have his MP left. Mm, I kind of want to kill this with Hana, but yeah, no, everybody's going to, okay. If I can hit perfects with Solstora and Kadi, I can kill that guy. Yeah, yes. If I can hit the perfect with Solstora, he dies. If not, I take damage. Just the good, but we only needed the good there. All right, we need the perfect. Ooh, oh, I missed. <laughs> No! Oh! Oh! Shit! Ah! <laughs> it's so much fun. I don't know how much fun it is to watch, but it's so much fun to play. And I particularly have got to say, on the phone, oh my god. I lose so much time just quote-unquote testing. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Oh, okay, I needed a perfect there to get a kill. Actually, I probably needed two perfects. Would I even been able to kill then? Probably so. All right. Cotty. Get it. All right. Cell store gets a perfect and it's done, right? Okay. So, anyway, this is... Oh, 
no. See, if I got a perfect there, we wouldn't have taken this hit. Damn, three damage we didn't have to take. You might think it doesn't matter, and it doesn't matter now, but... Oh, she got the most kills again. I wanted to show the different scene. <laughs> Whoops. I wasn't thinking about it. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to show you guys the variability there. But if we keep going, <gasps> suddenly it's nighttime and there's this much stronger enemy up here. And once again, we are not healed. You see, she's got seven health. And if you look at this guy's attack power, he has eight. So if he hits her and she doesn't perfect defend, she just dies in one hit. Yeah, it gets crazy. All right, um, let me... I don't want to show you guys too much. These are just kind of some of the first levels, and I've shown you how they can go if you're playing uh, really well or, or playing really poorly or whatever. Um, let me do this. Let's warp back to the base. Here, we'll just auto win this one. How about that? That's the debug power. And we'll take a break. So... Uh, when you push farther and harder like that. Yes, I know the Pakati portrait's terror. I know it's not final. It's just placeholder stuff. Hana's cute though. Hana's always cute. Um, yeah. You know, when you keep pushing forward like that, you get more experience for your, your characters per in-game day. And then you can get more treasure and loot. And I'll show some, some of the different things that you can get here. Like you can get items like this buckler. It's an accessory that makes good zone smaller on defense trials, but on perfect defense trial, you get your next turn faster. Parry the world. It's an item that when you get perfect defenses, you jump forward on the readiness bar. It's really, really, really sick. There's lots of fun stuff like that. Um, how about I show off? Mm, let's see. Which one of these spells will be fun to show? Mm, maybe this one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, here. Shadow Splash. Shadow Splash is a really cool one. Teleport to a nearby tile. Perfect trial results in getting your next turn more quickly. Take a deep breath and dive into the void. So you get some fun spells that you can use. Um, maybe I should show off changing the terrain too. Let me get some Kabatov cocktails. I'll show setting the ground on fire maybe. Uh, let me give myself some armor to sell store a custom. So soft and warm. You see the the uh, formatting error there. Like I said, it's it's early dev stuff, guys. It's it's uh, early in development. I think, and this is just me personally, but I think it's pretty damn well made for a game early in development. Sort of a legendary hero, maybe, <laughs> maybe it could be. Um, oh, let's do a chain lightning. Hold on. Uh, let me give a uh, hand axe. Yeah, hand axe should work for it. Good for chopping wood and limbs. Yeah, that gives material. So that'll give her access to that. We'll give her some extra MP here. I'm just cheating up a storm for you guys. Don't worry about it. I just want to show off some of the different things that you can do. Some of the fun that you can have with some of these things. All right, here. Uh, by the way, you'll notice these stars here. Gold means you fulfilled the optional objective for that area. Silver means you didn't. And then obviously these other ones are just not cleared yet. But I want to point out just how much crazy detail we're putting into stuff. Because you notice that the silver star actually flashes depending on how the gold stars are situated around it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're back to daytime. But we've got one of these super strong enemies here. Um, I think I can show you guys a fatal kill. I think these are weak to poison. Yeah. Poison's his fatal weakness. So if I hit him with the poison nail and inflict the status. Here, I'm just going to hop her out of the way. Ooh, we're going to set up a chain lightning after this, but I think kadi has got the poison nail. I think I need to hit the perfect on this to kill him, though. If I miss it... Uh-oh. Tap, tap. Ooh, okay. Get wrecked. 
See, it did one damage, but it didn't matter because it inflicted poison, which was his fatal ailment. So we don't have to deal with that strong guy at all. Buckler boost! You see her jump forward on that and get her turn quicker. Now she can murderize this guy faster. Bop! Also, you'll notice the damage font is different depending on what percentage of the enemy's health you do on a single hit. If you do all of it in a single hit, you get that, uh, that flash that you just saw. Actually, hold on. Let me move here. You're gonna head this way. I don't care about him taking damage right now. It doesn't matter. I'll show you another cool spell, that Shadow Splash, which is an enemy spell that you can get as an item. It's handy having a teleport, man. Oh, I didn't get the perfect, but... Yeah, <laughs> I love that animation. <laughs> All right, chain lightning. This is one of the, this is a really fun spell. <laughs> There's a lot of fun spells, but this is one of my favorites. Chain lightning. Travels from unit to unit, taking the longest path possible. Deals 125 shock buildup. That's subject to change, by the way. <laughs> We're just messing around with numbers and it shows. Damages the final unit in the chain for four damage times the number of units hit. It might come as a shock, but the last one's it. So every unit that you hit takes shock buildup. So that includes my characters too. But only the last target hits, takes damage. But you gotta be careful with this because if one of your units happens to be at the, the end of the longest path that it can take, you get messed up. Also, you're about to see something that's likely to be cut from the game. I'm just telling you right now. There's a, a different mini game for this right now where these little things bounce around. Uh, we're probably not gonna have this. <laughs> we're probably just gonna do the ring trials uh, because it's faster and more fun. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. But you only have so much MP to use stuff like that, so... I missed! That's what I get for going for perfects all the time. Oh, let me see if I can do a weak hit on this guy. Well, he's only got 9 HP. It's probably going to be a strong hit no matter how hard I hit him. I wanted to show the different damage fonts. Let me just do a good hit. And good. Yeah, see that would two-shot him still, so you get that, that tier. That tier of damage that you just saw, I think, is like... Um, five hits or something like that. Yeah. Uh, let's see what I want to do. Oh, I was gonna burn the ground just because I can. Show you guys what it looks like. You can use this as like a item or mana efficient way to inflict status ailments by actually changing the terrain and then funneling the enemy onto it using movement. Yeah. There's <laughs> a ton of fun stuff you can do. I've probably already showed too much. I've only showed two enemy types. Well, technically three, but... Um, it's still probably already too much, huh? Alright, let's see the big flashy numbers. How about it? Bam. <laughs> wow! So that's the hero of the West. You really went right for the throat. Can't afford to show mercy in battle. Find a weakness, exploit it, and live. Yeah, just be careful he doesn't exploit you. Alright, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spoil the story. I'm not gonna spoil the story. Let's just say the party is on weird terms with each other. How about that? Um yeah. So, Radix Chronicle. Really appreciate support. If you've watched to, to this point in the video, I hope that you've enjoyed what you've seen. It's uh, it is an absolute labor of love. It's it's so much fun to work on, and um, right now I really appreciate support on the Kickstarter because we're just trying to get funds to be able to make it better, to get more illustrations, more remixed music tracks, um, 
yeah, uh, for Ray to be able to, to work on it some more. We want to do an expert mode, which includes uh, includes a built-in randomizer and survival gauntlet at the end. Um, there's a lot of fun things that we want to do. But yeah, you can wishlist it on Steam. You can back it on Kickstarter. Really appreciate backing it on Kickstarter. Helps out a lot. Wishlisting it also helps out a lot. Um, yeah, it's Radix Chronicle, guys. Should come out early next year. You see what I'm talking about with the stars? Only this side of it flashes. <sighs> I love craftsmanship. Do 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 do.